Welcome to The Small Scape. Today we are talking five things that I used to do when I started off in the hobby and I don't do them anymore. Now before I start, if any of these things that I used to do that I no longer do, and if you still enjoy these as part of your aquarium hobby, more power to you. We're all gonna be different. Every single fish keeper is gonna have different thoughts. I just thought that this would, um, these points that I'm gonna bring up might just shed some light if you're considering other options, just throwing it out there. And uh, hopefully, before we even start, put down what, if there's anything that you can think of, like right off the bat, like, oh, I would have done that, or I did do that first, right when I first started this, this hobby, but I no longer do it because I, I love reading through these and so does everybody else. Number one is, I never thought when I started this hobby, I never thought that I would say this, but something that I used to do all the time when I started the hobby is use black sand. I was part of the black sand gang. I only, that was my favorite, black sand. And specifically, top fin black sand from PetSmart. It was my favorite sand. Well, first of all, they no longer sell it. Now it's it's basically black diamond blasting sand from what I can gather. It's kind of got a little bit of shimmer. Um, I'm not really quite sure how well my plants like it when I do a brand new setup with it. Uh, I, I'm going to have to look into that. But I also, how when I first started, I really thought that it would kind of help um, like looking at all the stuff that flows to the bottom. It'll kind of mask it. No. I personally find that it kind of highlights things. All the stuff that falls, maybe even food that falls to the bottom of the, the tank, you can see it better. Personally speaking, I have gone away from using black sand all the time. Now here and there, I will still use it. I do like a darker substrate sometimes, but I've incorporated some of the medium color, even light colored sand. That's probably you know, you're, you're going to do that when you, uh, the longer you spend in this hobby, you're going to start liking different aquascapes. The more you see them, if you go to Aquashellas, like we do, and uh, if you follow other uh, aquascapers, you're going to see different styles and you're probably going to incorporate them and try them because a light colored substrate or even a medium kind of brown colored substrate is a very natural look and it's, it's going to give you a completely different look than black sand. So if you are starting in the hobby, just, uh, or if you've been in it a while and you want something different, just try changing up the color of the substrate. It could be super fun. Number two, the probably one of the biggest things that I did when I first started the hobby, because I don't know if you also appreciate miniatures like I do. If you put anything in a miniature version, sign me up. I'm just like, oh, that's so cute. It's adorable. I, I love it. Well, that also went with aquariums. The first aquarium that I had to have, I told Mr. Prime Time, he wanted to get me a tank. We're going to get a small one for my office or something. And he was trying to talk me into getting like a five gallon, like a oh, complete setup. I was like, no, I want the two and a half gallon. And he's like, it doesn't come with anything. We're going to have to get the filter and we're going to have to get a lid separately and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I have to have it because it looks like a little shrunken, like a 20 gallon or a 10 gallon. And the two and a half gallon, it's so cute. Well, I still think it's really, really cute. And I had 10 of them lined up, very quickly realized I did not like that. I don't like looking down this little tiny window of a tank and having them all lined up. It just it, it just wasn't enough space for me and to keep a betta in. I think it's a little on the small side. Uh, we were gonna breed the bettas, but uh, I've, I've realized that now I can still appreciate miniatures but I really do like to have a slightly larger aquarium whenever I'm looking for a small tank. I will consider now bumping up a little size. So if I'm looking at a really nice little three gallon, I will consider and probably go to the five gallon. And then the same thing there, if I maybe have a five gallon and I'm maybe looking at some different fish, I will say, you know what? I'm really going to kind of go towards a bigger tank. And I think that's common the longer that you are in the aquarium hobby, uh, that's what I've heard, that people start with smaller tanks, especially those who love nano tanks like I do, and you will eventually go up from there. The first time that I got 20 long, I was like, oh, it's huge. And I don't know, it took me a while to warm up to it, but once I had a 20 long, I was like, oh my gosh, 
it's it's great it's a great size you can have way more options in stocking it and different kind of plant choices different aquascapes that you can do it's just so don't eliminate if you're first starting out in the hobby don't eliminate the slightly larger aquariums yes you're gonna have to consider the more weight you're gonna have to consider that furniture that you're gonna have to put this aquarium on but totally, totally worth it number three is I, I, this is like my memory is crystal clear when i would always want to do an aquarium or an aquascape in an aquarium i would always want to find I'd start off mentally with like the driftwood because I just love different pieces of driftwood. I would always look for the piece of driftwood. You do an aquascape or smaller tanks, frequently you can find a single piece of driftwood that that will be the driftwood. Well, the longer that I'm in the hobby, the more I realize, especially when you see these pros doing the aquascapes with multiple pieces of driftwood, even in a smaller tank, just because you don't find the piece of driftwood well that's probably because it it may not be the piece of driftwood you're going to need some other ones to go along with it maybe take up some space in the front or the back or even attach them glue them together but that is something i would have never considered my newbie me would have never considered okay, multiple pieces of driftwood just thrown out there number four and this is also about picking out an aquarium so if you are starting off in the the hobby or if you're just expanding and maybe you want uh, you're new to the nano world and you're like hey i want to get a small tank for my desk or you know living room the kitchen bathroom wherever nano tanks are awesome but i have found the more that i'm in the hobby that i would have never considered way back when is am i going to want to do a different backdrop if i will want to do it kind of switch up the backdrop i have a lot of videos coming once this studio is changed up fun fact i am currently driving around with a very large dresser in my car right now and i probably will be for a while because it's going to be coming in here and, and there is no room yet until mr prime time goes downstairs but when i started i would just look at an aquarium that i really liked there are really cool aquariums like the ones in back here they are all all of the mechanics are behind a wall, a black wall. It, it actually gives it a really nice seamless look. You don't have to look at a sponge filter. You don't have to look at any of the filtration. It's just gone. However, if you want to change up the backdrop, like I've done in uh, the this, this Snowyscape video and other videos as well, you can't put a light colored backdrop in there. It's that's the color backdrop you're going to get. It's it's black. So you're very limited if you want to give it any kind of a uh, different kind of aesthetic. And uh, right now, I'm currently thinking of many different options to incorporate other elements into an aquarium. Like where you're going to keep it in your house. Maybe you would want to incorporate uh, a different color backdrop. Or uh, for, a, for a while there, there was a lot of scapes that were done where you illuminate the back. It's actually quite simple to do with LED lights and maybe wax paper. Literally, you can put wax paper on the back of a tank and you can illuminate it with some LED puck lights or anything. And it gives it a completely cool and totally different look. You can't do that with a tank that has all the stuff uh, in the background. But these tanks do serve a great purpose. I like to incorporate them as part of my uh, aquarium repertoire because you don't see any of the mechanics and that can be really cool. And number five, this is also for someone who's just want to keep this in mind and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me and that's totally fine. When you get a nano tank or any kind of aquarium, you're going to need to decide what kind of filtration are you going to be using. You can use a, of course, a canister, which is completely outside of the tank, which is completely awesome. You can use a sponge filter, which is very simple to use and simple to maintain, or a hang on back filter, which you're gonna see on top of the tank, or but it's kind of easy to reach in there and change the, the filter media and all that. But um, I, I historically, especially since almost all of my tanks were in the basement and Mr. Primetime was always helping me set up a tank. His go-to filtration was a sponge filter. So I would almost always have 
a sponge filter in my tank. And now, since I've been doing this for quite some time, I will, I will completely resist using a sponge filter. It is my least favorite. I know that a lot of people really love them and I just don't personally have the skills to escape around it. I, I really don't. I, I'll even, in my 20 long, I currently in the basement, my rummy nose tank has a sponge filter in there and I did kind of surround it with plants and rocks, but I just don't think it, it does the filtration quite as well. It's hard to kind of service back there because I'm always like knocking this one branch out of the way. It's really a pain. But now I know that that's just not my filtration of choice. So I think that can be really helpful too. The longer that you're in this hobby, you will probably start deciding, I like that filtration, I don't like that filtration, or maybe you just kind of like them all with different kind of tanks and you just get your preferences. So keep that in mind. Uh, the filtration that you once liked, you may not like in the future. So those are my five things that I didn't do that I now do, or really kind of vice versa. Hopefully you enjoyed this and don't forget, let me know what you used to do and you don't do or vice versa. And uh, those are so fun to read, I, I love those. But uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week.